Today is a proud day for our company and my family. We acquired the depot in 1992, approximately four years after the building was shut and vacated by Amtrak. The building's past glory years had faded away with trespassers, vandals, and what some excuse as urban explorers. The city of Detroit was not in good shape at that time. Its manufacturing and population base had been in chronic decline. The depot had become a symbol of Detroit's troubles. Although my father and I believed in this building and Detroit, many others did not. The New York Times labeled its iconic facade as an example of how far the city had fallen. The past Detroit City Council members in 2009 voted, resolved, and ordered its demolition. At least one of our major Detroit newspapers published an editorial advocating for leveling it. My father and I were quite alone, left only with a positive long-term vision that no one else could see. Certainly we had made acquisitions in the past that at first looked rough and later blossomed. However, this one was different. Our critics were not just throwing words, but rocks. We held strong over many years. The city went into bankruptcy and came out the other side. The politics changed from despair to hope and reinvestment began. We took actions as well, ridding the building of asbestos and debris, securing it and protecting it from vandals, installing a freight elevator in over 1,000 brand new windows. Development in the downtown was spreading our way. Redevelopment ideas were coming our way and simultaneously we were chasing them down. I was convinced of two things. The building would be redeveloped and our company would do it. The ideas and opportunities pitched to us started as far-fetched ones, like aquariums, beer halls, and vertical farming. Yet, as more time and improvement in the city strengthened, the ideas and opportunities became more realistic and more likely to be profitable. The challenges I saw it, could I find a development of the caliber and uniqueness worthy of the depot's former glory is one of the city's most important buildings. On October 13, 2017, a meeting was arranged by a friend that connected me to the grand development I was looking for. I had mixed emotions. I knew that this was exactly what the building needed, the golden opportunity for its rebirth, the American second chance. I also knew that it would not be possible for me and our company to co-captain such a dramatic project. The depot's redevelopment and revitalization would only be part of an enormous plan taking in much more than the depot itself. The developer had to be the owner and the user. I would characterize the negotiations as respectful and they were not protracted in any way. The due diligence of checking out the bones of the building and formulating plans took the vast majority of the time. The deal is complete. The future of the depot is assured. The next steward of the building is the right one for its future. The depot will become a shiny symbol of Detroit's success and progress. Ford Motor Company's Blue Oval will adorn the building. I thank Bill Ford, Ford Motor, and the Ford family for their vision and commitment to this building. I thank my own company's key players that have played important roles not only in the transaction but in the stewardship of the building since we acquired it. I thank Tom Buell, my friend, that made the first connection. I thank David Dubinsky of Ford Motor Land, Michael Samhat of Crown Enterprises, Ken Carter of the Ambassador Bridge. I thank Mayor Duggan and the City Council for creating and fostering a hopeful and positive environment in the city of Detroit. I'd like to thank the mayor again for keeping some of the back channels open during the negotiations. And I thank Keith Crane for hosting Homecoming Detroit at the depot in the fall of 2017. There are many others too. But most of all, I thank my father 
for sharing his vision with me about this building and passing on his unwavering strength in standing by your belief, even when short-sighted conventional wisdom folks are hurling rocks. I received an unsolicited note that hit my feelings head on. Matt, you and your dad believed in the depot in Detroit when Detroit didn't believe in you. With that, I will turn my attention and our company will turn its attention more fully to another development we've been working on over the river. Thank you all for attending. I'll take just a couple of questions. So Matt, you, your, company, your family is 100% out of the depot. The Ford Motor is the legal title to the, okay. to the depots. Yes, sir. So are there other buildings involved in the sale of Ford? Are there other buildings that you own involved? Yes, that uh, building that's sometimes referred to the book depository, uh, Ford's the owner of that too. That's a former building of ours. What was the sale price for those buildings? It's a private matter. What about the railroad bridge that runs behind your building? Is that part of the sale or is that owned by the railroads? Uh, I believe Canadian Pacific still uses and owns that uh, that right away, sir. What do you intend to do with the uh, that's for Ford's announcement. Uh, I don't want to skip ahead. Were you able to share any of your thoughts or ideas to them on what you envisioned this being? O of course we were. We, we had a number of very uh, very good conversations and creative ones, too. You must uh, have an estimate of what it would cost you to renovate the whole thing. Could you share that? Is that we're talking $100 million, $200 million? Well, I, I think their project will speak for itself, and uh, and they're very excited to, to fill you in on those details in the future. Now, what about the Ford? Well, the number of people involved, frankly, uh, Rod, and the fact that they were going to take it on, be the developer and the user at the same time. That's where everything comes together. Who was the friend that came here together on that project? Tom Buell. Tom um, worked this kind of deal behind the scenes for them? He introduced, he introduced us. Oh, how much trouble the station has caused your family over the last 40 centuries? In hindsight, was it worth it to buy it? I mean, it, it's here because we bought it, John. How important was it to have an automaker in this building? It's, it's the best. I mean, I, I know that the city was 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 looking for a a moonshot with Amazon, but I think we got what's really fitting for our city. What message do you want to send to a lot of people who? obviously own property in the city of Detroit uh, that's become an eyesore, that they're feeling the same way. They see a vision just like you did, and, um, and they're really hoping that something flourishes. Well, it, if, you, if you hold on and you, and, you, and you take care of it, and, and if it's strategic, uh, you have plenty of reason to be excited. So thank you all very much. Now that this is